Okay, hey everyone, it's Mike Valtos here from orderflows.com, and this is the orderflows market analysis for Wednesday, May 10, 2017. The market showed a little reaction to Trump's firing of uh, FBI Director Comey. Really, the big thing on the data calendar yesterday, or this morning rather, was the draw in weekly inventories of crude oil. Oil uh, jumped up about a buck and a half to around the 47.50 area. Also, in uh, the grains, you had the supply and demand report, the monthly supply and demand report, and you got a lot of movement in in the grains today. Even though the, you know, sort of, I don't say the consensus, but you know, for a lot of people, the feeling of the supply and demand report for a lot of the grains was actually neutral. But the markets went berserk, um, you know, and going all over the place. And I'll, I'll talk about the beans. I'm not going to talk about the corn or wheat, but um, you know, it was a bit interesting. You know, it was the way the grains move on the supply and demand report you know it just really reminds me of, of how s p's and bonds used to move back in the 90s early 2000s on the non-farm payrolls now it's a little bit more subdued in the s p's and bonds but um you know the way the grains were today you know just sort of brought back memories of uh, a time long ago but uh, before i jump in uh first go through the uh, brief disclaimer um, you know again I don't want people thinking this is you know order flow is some get rich quick scheme involving trading it's not um, you know it's what order flow teaches you to do is it teaches you to understand the market you know and, and watch the supply and demand forces that are going on you know the reality of trading you know what people are risking in the market you know by taking positions not necessarily just um, you know placing orders in the order book above and below the the bids um, you know that's you know that is a form of order flow trading on a dome is but what we do with the footprint chart is it's a little bit different it's actual trades you know, at people's actual commitments in the market you know what would you rather trade off is someone's intention or someone's commitment to the market you know would I you know honestly you know if the market's six seven and it's going to be six seven yeah I would try to sell at eight knowing that the market's six seven you know I'd put big offers up there at eight if, especially if I'm short at seven or if I'm short at six and I could put offers up there. Yeah, that will influence the market. But, you know, unless you trade a thousand at eight, you know, if it ticks up there, someone buys my thousand at eight, you know, that's going to change my perception of the market. You know, I'd be committed to a position and I have to work on getting out of it. So, you know, there are, there are different types of order flow analysis. You know, one is dome based, one is footprint chart based. Um, you know, you, people do make the argument that, you know, on the footprint chart, it's, that information is already passed, you know, that it's stale. I, I don't think so. It's recent, and again, it shows people's actual commitments to the market. And what would you rather do? You know, you could sit here, it's like dating, right? You could say, oh, I want to ask that girl out, I want to ask that girl out, and you never do, you know, but when you're trading, you're in a trade, it's going to change your perception of what happens. So, you know, it's like you ask the girl out, now you got to take her out and show her, you know, a fun time to have her, you know, you're committed to that to that date to, to that relationship if you want it to grow whereas if you're just sitting there you know in your head thinking oh, i'm going to ask her out and you know then five months from now you know we're going to be married and you know talking about having kids but if you never do anything it doesn't matter and you know that's how i like to explain order flow to people um with the volume footprint chart you know it shows people's commitment to the market you know once you're in a position once someone's in a position when someone's traded something i think that has more uh relevancy than someone's intention you know just showing bids and offers above and below the market so anyway a brief disclaimer this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only should not be considered a solicitation of buyer or seller futures contract or make any other type of investment decision futures trading contains substantial risk and it's not for every investor an investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment risk capital is money that could be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You know, people always say, you know, what's your edge in the market? Backtesting. Well, yeah, backtesting is great on the data that already happened. Um, you know, you you can't trade on data that's already happened, you know, where you're backtesting from, you know, data from last year and, and six years ago. You know, markets are constantly evolving. Things are changing in the market. And, you know, people sometimes get really caught up in past performance thinking that it's indicative of future results that's why you know the cfdc nfa you know they always say past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results and results for everybody is not going to be the same you know my results doesn't mean they're going to be your results you know i said i've, I've traded 
professionally for a very long time. You know, when I say professionally, I don't mean you know sitting in my my home office trading. I mean sitting in a bank trading. You know, that's how I paid my bills. That's how I, um, you know, paid my house, paid my car, paid all that stuff. That's what I did for a living. That's what I mean by trading professionally. You know, you know I, I see people saying, "Oh, I'm going to become a professional trader," meaning they're just going to become a retail trader. You know, there's a difference. There's a difference there. Um, so anyway. The tools used in this presentation are the order flows trader and the delta scalper. So, uh, you know, first market I'll, I'll talk about today is S and P's real quick. Um, you know, S and P's in the morning, very boring morning again. And you know, there was some little bit of a movement that you know, I, I think could have been had. And you know, it was in during the time of the room. And I just want to show you real quick. This is the four range chart. You know, it happened around nine o'clock. So you know. In the morning, we had been making these highs, you know, just before 8 o'clock, you got a high, you got a divergence, another high, 8.30, around the cash open, divergence, Delta Scalper, given a sell here, you know, you had the stacked imbalance, but again, you know, it's a stacked imbalance, you're going into the cash open, you, you, do you want to take it, you know, it's up to you, you may have to hold it up through the cash open, and, you know, things can really change once the cash opens. A couple minutes past the cash open, you get another divergence, so I already got three divergences in about a half hour. And, you know, to me, that's ready. That's a sign that, you know, we're, we're bumping up against the high, hitting it, coming off, hitting it, coming off, hitting it, coming off. I start thinking in my head, you know, we may be looking at a market that wants to go higher. I, I would say trending market, but, you know, the last couple of days have been kind of boring. But anyway, um, so you know, I am kind of looking for a move higher here. So boom, 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 failed divergences. Start coming back up. You got the Delta Scalper given this this buy here going into the high. Then you hit this new high. It's a new high by a couple ticks. So it's not a powerful new high. And, you know, you're not seeing buying imbalances coming in here. You're not seeing people aggressively buying. So that's telling you, you know, these. if we hit this high, we could come off again before we make a new high. Again, it's not just, oh, you know, there's not aggressive buying that we're going to hit the high, come off into the lows. No, we're just, it's just kind of drifting around there. You know, at this time, you know, our, our range was 87 and a half basically to 93. So, you know, basically about a five point range. And, you know, when you have a tight range coming into the morning, who's, you gotta ask yourself, who's active? It's not the big institutional traders, because if they were, one, you'd be seeing a lot more size going through, and two, you'd see the market moving. And, you know, you don't necessarily see a lot of size going through in, in a lot of these bars of the volume. And you don't really see the market moving. You know, anytime you hit a high or a low of the day, what you want to see, you want to see the longer term traders coming into the market, you know, move the market away from value area to find another value area. And you're not seeing that, you know, when you hit these highs or even at these highs. So you got another divergence up here. Market starts to come off. Okay, you got no ratio, but you got ratio in the second part, 57. Okay, which, you know, I talk about saying, you know, even if you, you have a divergence, look for a ratio either in the bar with the divergence or the next bar. Okay, you get it, but you know, your move is going to be a bit limited. You're only talking about a five-point range at this point. It sells off. Um, you know, it sells off from 91 three quarters down to basically 89 and a quarter. So yeah, it, it had a little bit of a move, not the greatest move. Starts coming back up. Now you're starting to see some buying come in. You know, here you had some selling imbalances. That's nice to see. You know, if you're short, then you start going sideways. Buying starts coming in. Buying imbalance there but you know three in here one in here but you got ratio 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 this is that the setup that i talk about the three in a row look for the red bar in the fourth bar bar one bar two bar three bar four pull back you get the pull back to the point of control of the third and second bar and you know look for a move higher from there you know and you start getting it you start seeing some buying you know it just goes goes up a little bit comes back down boom comes back up buying imbalance buying imbalance looks like okay finally we're seeing some aggressive buying come in and you know possibly we could be taking out the highs and we do um you know just after 10 o'clock we start taking out <coughs> excuse me start taking out these highs putting in new highs new highs you get another divergence that fails another divergence that fails start coming off um you're just going sideways in here start hanging in and you know going we made the move my my i ended my day at uh quarter after one or around there 130 but that's why i got no data there but you know you can see how the move was and again you know sort of the first sign early uh, you know everyone was in the room you know, not a lot of people but uh, 10 or so um today you know heard me saying you know when you get these failed divergences it's a sign and we had point of control migrating higher as well for the day you know those are early signs that you know we could be moving higher 
later and we do we get this we start coming off but then you, know, you get a buying opportunity as well you know the three in a row i mean you know, i don't want to say you got you could be, you would be buying it in here no but you know in here definitely with the three in a row this pull back down to the 91 and three quarters area 92 you know then a move all the way up to 95 you know that's that's a decent move on you know how it was you know especially on these days in the s p's that are doing um basically nothing so you know that that was it you know the five years the, today you know the bonds in five years again you know sort of did nothing most of the morning five years very boring there was activity uh, later around uh, around 12 but um i just want to show you you know something that again another thing i had talked about in the room this morning where was it here you know it was taking forever to form these bars you know this bar is 809 and then 910 so another one hour to form this bar another 35 minutes to get this bar but you know this is what I, I was highlighting this in the room today you had point of control point point of control point of control two at the same level one a tick higher and really what I, you know even though you had a delta scalper there okay you know that, that I'm not going to deny that but um, you have these points of controls. When I see point of controls lining up at around the same level, to me that's a market generated level, a support level or resistance level. In this case, it's a resistance level. This last bar is down or trading below it. Point next bar, point of control below it. So it's telling me, you know, I, market looks more like it's going to sell off than rally. You know, even though you have the delta scalper here, um, you couldn't rally past you know the previous high of this bar. So that's, you know, to me that's telling me that's not uh, going to be a good trade you know it said I'm, I'm looking in this bar you know if, if you just go here like this and you know i think hey i dealt scalper i gotta buy and you buy and then you look at this bar really it's not encouraging because one you can't get past the previous high you can't you know you only get one tick past the high of this bar with the delta scalper in it it's you know if you're looking if you're along you, you don't get married to this trade you got to get out um you know it's it's easy to say that after the fact, but you know, really, you gotta real, you gotta, you know, people get sometimes get married to trades and forget to read the order flow as it's happening. But you know, if you're, you know, I said you're you're at this point, right? You got these point of controls in this area, one and a half, one and three quarters. Then the next bar point of control, is same level, but the bar's down. You know, that's that's not a good sign. That's definitely not a good sign. So you know, you have this resistance level up here, and you're trading below it. You know, and if you're long. And you're trading below a resistance level that that's not the best trade and then especially the next bar starts trading lower point of control lower as well you know it said if you're along this delta scalper you, you should have been out already but definitely by this time you should definitely be out but really you know this was key to me um you know reading the market the point of controls you see how it's, it's lower you know, get short you know i'll say get short but you know it it has going to give me more of an opportunity on the short side than on the on the long side and you know we start trending lower over the next hour or so um going down into the lows you know 12 o'clock you had some stuff coming out but um you know that was that was it this was the key here in the five years this morning now the next market uh where is it here tell it crude really quick So anyway, you had the inventory numbers come out. You see how the market is going berserk go there. Uh, there was something here. Okay, so there's a couple of things. This point of control, 945 point of control right at the top, which with the ratio, which for me is bearish. You know, it came back. It's, it made new highs. Uh, you know, went higher. So you know, this one. I'll be honest. You know, you know, I, I want to show you times where trades fail. Um, you know, not every thing is going to work out picture perfect. You know, you had a high point of control at the top. You had a ratio. You look to get short. It doesn't happen. Um, it just rallies back up there and makes new highs. Now you get up here to this high. You don't have a ratio, but what you got here is this delta scalper given a sell, and you got a huge negative delta, strong negative delta, minus two thousand three hundred forty. Which you know for an eight range crude oil chart, that's pretty massive actually. And you know it's right off the high, so you hit your high right after it. You got a huge selling coming in. You, you got some supportive buying. 1300 1200 see about two and a half thousand bid here on the bid that got sold into and you know there's no more support there it's, and you just see how the floodgates 
you know just it just sells off right there it gets down into this area you see some support coming in down here um, does rally back a bit later get up into these uh, high areas up in here and you know just sort of going sideways you know, lower point of controls you know Delta scalp are giving a buy there with the ratio into some new highs a sell sorry this was the Delta surge sell with its scalper buy with the scalper back um, you know before we start uh, coming off here hitting this new high area and sell off again point of control here is at the top you get a little bit of a move lower um, you know not not the strongest move but you know move about 15 cent move you know so this one worked out the one earlier in in here didn't you know what time was that that was around 945 you know here this point of control at the top it didn't work out later it did later it gave you a nice little move so again you know I don't, I don't want people thinking you know every single buy and sells can be predicted with uh, order flow no I mean you still got to read the market uh, euro currency really quick um, just go back to around 7 30 time Again, you know, point of control right at the top of this bar. You know, it's, it's a swing high. You can see how, you know, no previous high before. Point of control right at the top. You got a ratio. You got the delta scalper. You got, you know, I'll say a trifecta. You know, people say, well, if I, if I combine this with this with this, you know, it's going to be better. Yeah, probably. I'm not a big fan of, you know, the star system, what I call the star system. You know, uh, you know, I really used to be involved in horse racing in my younger days. And you know, one of my my best friends, he would get the racing form. He put check mark, you know, star, circle, this, that on on the form. I'd be looking at his racing form. He's got all these squiggly marks, you know. And I'm like, well, which one do you bet? Well, the one with the most squiggly marks is <laughs> the one that he would bet. Um, you know, God love him. But uh, you know, and, yeah, you can make the argument of con confluence, you know, where you get a lot of things uh, going off at the same time. But you know, each one of these. You know, either the delta scalper or the point of control or this ratio, you know, would be actionable. But yeah, is it better to get a few? Probably, you know, honestly, yeah. You know, I do like getting point of control with a ratio. I do like getting delta scalper, um, you know, actually by itself. But, you know, so here, yeah, you don't get, you get <laughs> a little bit of a move off this area, just, but it just goes sideways, unfortunately, for about, you know, 45 minutes before it, it starts selling off, you know, down into here where you get, this now this low here the swing low is a little bit interesting you had a doji bar with the delta scalper then you get a bar here point of control towards the bottom not a ratio but then the next bar you get the delta scalper again get a nice little move up comes back down test this low area where the point of control was down there um, delta surge here on this move up delta scalper given the sell down here again delta surge a little pop up price rejector given a buy here so, you know, depending on your type of trading, you know, if you're very short term, long term, I don't know, um, you know, there's a little bit, there's these little moves to be had. And then, you know, later in the day, you got this, you, you come back up here to the swing high, <laughs> got a ratio up here, 83, which is bearish. Okay. You had a ratio here, but this one, you know, it's just a double top yeah, and it's a little bit more volume. Again, you get unfinished business for you, unfinished business fanatics out there. Look for the market to come back to that area. So, you know, be careful about getting short off this ratio. We do come back up here, make this new high single print. Then you get the Delta Scalper here. And you also you got the transition, this, this, I don't know if you could see that, the yellow. And this was a nice sell, you know, from the 90 area, 88, 89 area, down, downtown, downtown, down into the 70s. Um, so, you know, there was, there was some decent, uh, you know, honestly, there were, there were some decent moves today. You know, it's just, you know, recently though, the S&Ps during the mornings have been, for lack of a better word, uh, uneventful. But, you know, some of these other markets, oh, okay, talk about the soybeans really quick, you know, because I had alluded to that, um, I alluded to that market earlier, actually, so I, I do want to get the chart up for you if I could just find it here. Yeah, beans, beans, soybeans. I say, you know, the way it was moving today after the USDA report really is reminiscent of uh, how S&Ps really used to move. So, again, you know, point of control. This is at 8.30. You know, point of control near the top of the bar didn't work out. You know, ratio, divergence, you know, you got a few things sold off. You know, it, it's 8.34. 
so it's within the first five minutes of the reopen and and I know that you know algos that kick off on the on the open you know at 8 30 you know give them you know I know people that run them I know traders you know at banks I don't want to say what company of JP Morgan or whatnot but you know I, I do know the guys on the execution desk and how they would enter these orders and you know they get orders on the order book you know that's you know starting at the at the 8:30 open you know view app you know just start buying or just start selling and it usually lasts you know they, they put it in for five minutes you know either they do view app or they do percentage of volume and it will usually last for about five minutes depending on the size of the order um you know they'll, they'll do it for about five minutes or so that's why I, I like to give people ask why do you give five minutes that's why but anyway you know this one didn't work now here you got a divergence at the high of the day and you know you do come off a little bit start coming up now you get this bar here very strong delta plus 783 you got a ratio you got stack buying imbalance you got the delta scalper then in the next bar you got a bearish ratio you got three a single print there and you can you know when you have this stacked imbalance you know what you want to see you want to see continued buying you don't want to see selling come in in price rejection and when you do it's got a high percentage chance of failing and it does it comes down in here it goes sideways 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 now it's you know this time it's 10 o'clock you know 9 you know, 11 is, is when the report comes out so you know keep you gotta keep that in the back of your head but really you know when you have a stacked imbalance look for the move in the next two bars if it's not happening in the next two bars if you're still in it by the third bar it's probably not going to happen probably not going to be very effective when I say it's not going to happen what I mean is over the next five bars you know, again I don't look at these being a level all day long I'm looking at it being a level for the immediate term because you have aggressive buying coming in here what you want to see is when you pull back in there you want to see the aggressive buying come back in instead you're seeing aggressive selling which is not necessarily the, what you want to be seeing so anyway and it takes it spins its wheel for an hour um, basically just around that area so you know at best you would have maybe lost a couple of ticks on this trade you know if you had traded this or you know as I say it lost but you know at best you would have broke even I don't think you, there was no capacity to make money on that trade started coming off um, you know coming into the 11 o'clock time you come up to the high make a new high you got a divergence nothing um, 11 o'clock in the market you just see it's all zeros on the bid side it's just all buying it's just all reactionary buying you know you're, you're not going to be trading here realistically you know 11 double O and you know 06, 07, 07, 07, 08. Yeah, you could, I could make the argument that at 989 there is resistance. You know, you can see the buying imbalance of, up there, 171, 236, but against 4 against 230, 0 against 171. So there is offers up there. There is offers. You do have, you know, buying imbalances. You've got ratios, ratio balance lows. You got, um, you, know, you don't have divergences, but, you know, you, you, you've got a lot of things you know kind of negative but honestly the way the market's moving most people wouldn't be trading it now you know then we come off again it's coming off within 20 you know we 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 made a move okay so I'm talking about you made a move you went from 979 all the way up to 980 989 back down to 970 you know 981 um, 979 and this is within 20 seconds of the number coming out not a lot of volume going through. You can see, you know, 40s, you know, 18s, sixes. Um, you know, Delta Scopper given a sell here again. I, you know, if you automated your system, you would have caught that. Um, you know, going lower. You know, it's just going all over the place here. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. And then you know, Delta Scopper given another sell here. You know, right into the low. You know, am I going to say at this point it slowed down a little bit? Well. It took about 20 seconds for this bar to form, another 20 seconds. It's taken about 20 seconds now, as far as before, it was taking two seconds for a bar to form. Uh, picks up, sells off into these lows. Um, you know, hits this low, got a divergence, no ratio, rallies, bounces up a bit. Comes up here, Delta Scalper, given another sell. This time it just goes sideways. You know, you do have a ratio and price rejector as well. Doesn't do anything, it just goes sideways on you. Um, <clears throat> got Delta Scalper buy, Delta Scalper sell here right into these um you know i'll say right into the lows it came down bounced up a little bit hit a new low point of control right at the bottom with a ratio which just to me is bullish didn't work out hits this low starts bouncing up hits the low again no reason to buy here no reason to buy here and you just sort of going around hit the low again come down here boom hit the low 
point of control right at the bottom. Again, it's 110. Market's closing in five minutes. A bullish, I'm sorry, a bearish ratio. You, you do rally up going into the close. So, yeah, honestly, I feel exhausted just talking about that market. You know, just you know how crazy it was. Now, you know, people say, well, can you trade that? Yeah, you can. Um, you know, I, I used to, I used, I used to trade S and P's when it was on the original Globex system during the numbers. You know, I, I used to trade at night. I would come into the office at around 10 in the evening, and I would leave. Well, S and P's on the original Globex closed at 8:15. And then the floor opened at 8:30, but you know, and those numbers were you know, back in those days. You know, it was the big S and P, where it was uh, was like 25, 25 bucks a tick. And you know, it was really you get you know a, a full point move. You know, and that was when S and P's was trading, uh, you know, 550, so 5, 550 to 551, and it was moving in nickels. You know, that's a 250 dollar. Is that right? I can't remember now, but you know it was the big S and P's back then. But big S and P's wasn't uh, as as big a contract as it is now because obviously they come out with the minis and a lot of people are trading the minis. But what you want to do? Okay, I'll give you Mike's big number trading method. You know when you got a big number coming out, really the supply and demand number for the S and P's is like the Fed announcement, the non-farm payrolls, all put in together, rolled into one. And you know, what you want to do is, anytime you, you hit a high or a low, look for a reason. Is there a reason to buy or sell? Now you're not going to get it. You know, you're usually not going to get a reason to stay in the trade very long. So it's just, it's just what you're looking to do is just get in as fast as you can, get out as fast as you can for um, what you can out of it. So you're coming up here again. You got to be very fast. Like I said, I don't recommend this for most people. And you know, if you're doing it. You should be in an arcade where you got, you know, the, the server direct line to the CME or your, your latency is is basically zero. And again, you know, most people, if you're sitting at home, forget about it. You, you can't. And you got to be very fast. So you're coming up here, you're hitting these highs one, two, three times. You see there's volume up there. You should be looking to sell. But, you know, if you're sitting at home, you see this. If you're even if you're very fast, by the time you hit, you sell it at the market. Don't try to work bids or offers. You got to sell it. You got to it, you're going to get screwed sometimes because you're going to get lousy fills. You know, you're just looking to sell it. You just hit whatever bid you can. And, you know, you're trying to sell it. If you're trying to sell it up here at the market, probably you're getting filled, you know, down here at, you know, two or three cents off of where you wanted to sell it. But again, you know, the market's got a lot of volatility. So you got to, you know, then quickly again, you know, this goes back to the original Globex system, you know. So as soon as you get your fill back, you got to think about where you're looking to buy. And you're just, you know, so you're selling it. You want to sell it. You're not going to sell it up here. You're not, uh, to be honest. And you know, you're selling it down here, 985. Okay, maybe I get two cents out of this move, three cents. You know, so you, you're throwing in a bid here. Then by the time you get it in, you're filled. And you know, you, you put in a, a 983 bid. By the time it hits the market, you know, you're filled probably a little bit better, 981 and a half. And you're probably thinking, oh, I should have waited a little bit longer. But you know what? It can move on you really quick. And then when you get down into the lows. Of the day I mean really you would be looking for areas to trade around you look at this low is there a reason to buy here well yeah you have a divergence maybe you're interested in divergences you you're willing to take a shot not me um, you know I'd be looking for something else like like here I'd be looking here I'd see well there's a, a point of control at the bottom there's a ratio I like yeah I'll try and buy it the time I get in you know I'm filled up here I gotta have my stop you gotta have a stop in on days like this either that or super fast reaction time to get out you get out very quick. Look for another reason to buy. Nothing down here. Nothing down here. Down here. Yeah, you do have a ratio, but that's it. You know, I'd, I'd like a little something else here. You get the divergence. You know, it's coming into the close though, so you gotta be in and out very quick. Get what you can out of it. And you know, it takes about it takes takes. You know, it's very close to whether you you'd be even taking this trade. You know, by the time you're getting in, you're closing in about two minutes. So it's just in and out very fast. So you know, really how I would trade those in the past, you know, you just look for these areas where you're hitting highs or lows and if there's a reason to sell there. Um, you know, yeah, you can make the argument, you know, I just want to catch the move. You know, you, you move from 989 down to 966. I just want to catch two cents in there. Yeah, you can probably, but you also might catch, you know, three cents a heat, which, you know, for some people is going to be unbearable. And by the time you, you cut it, then the market's back in your favor. So, 
again, you know, that, that's not something that's recommended for people. Now, I, I see a lot of, um, I don't say newbie traders, but, you know, beginning traders, you know, they'll post charts, you know, oh, yeah, you know, I had this great day, you know, on, on their sim account, you know, they're trading in there, um, you know, saying, oh, I see the system would have said buy here and sell there. But, you know, realistically, going back up here, you know, I'll be the first person to say, yeah, you know, there were some selling signs up here, but you're not going to be selling it up here. You're not going to be selling it. You know, if you could sell it above 985, that's a tremendously great fill. But realistically, you're going to be getting filled down here, 981, 982. That's really the, the most realistic fills you're going to get. And, you know, then if the market sells off and starts coming back up and, you know, say, okay, say you got an offer down here at, uh, you know, 987, we sell off down to 981 you know, 980, 977, start, and imagine if we start coming back all the way up to 987, chances are it's going to keep going higher. You don't want to be short up there anymore. You know, I mean, that's what, what people lose lose sight of, you know, on, on a volatile market. But, um, you know, that's why I laugh when I see people, you know, put sort of these these things and post these uh, charts online. Now, lastly, this is the U-turn. This, this is one of the volatile indicators, volatile U-turn. I, I call these things after myself because, you know, people have been stealing my ideas. At least, you know, I don't mind stealing my ideas. Just give me some credit for it. You know, that's all. That's why I named these things. S&Ps, oh, sorry, mini Dow gave a nice, a nice buy here right on this, this, this low. And, you know, it's a move from, um, you know, what is that, 870 all the way up to uh, 930. A little bit later, it gave this one, but it's sort of, puked out on you um anyway you know not to be uh not to be uh outshone is the transition which for me is usually a pretty good indicator right after the cash open gave a sell here this one stopped you out this one went nowhere before it jumped higher on you didn't work out and you got the sell up in here you know which is going down to right around uh well one o'clock as i said you know, i turned off my system went down about uh just after you know, one o'clock gave some false buys here this first one didn't work out second one no reason to take because he didn't go any higher but this one you know it just sort of went sideways on you so you know there was there was a couple of trades here you know that I'll say a couple that worked out one you know it was, it was about a break-even day on that transition but anyway you know the the Delta scalper you know I've been showing you guys a lot that I've been having a lot of interest from people asking me questions about that Delta scalper indicator which you know, on your currency has been doing fantastic recently. And you know, to learn more about it, uh, go to deltascalper.com or to learn more about order flow in general, go to my website, orderflows.com and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so whenever I post a new video, you will uh, be notified for it. So thanks and bye-bye.